Well, that is all from BBC News at 6, so it's goodbye from me. And on BBC One, we now join the BBC's news teams where you are. Bye-bye. Hello and welcome to Midlands Today. The headlines tonight. I want you to kill people for me. I have a list. The 21-year-old Birmingham woman who helped her husband prepare for terrorism. This was a, a single plot by family members to carry out a, a murderous terrorist attack, probably on the streets of Birmingham. We'll look at how the role of women is changing in terrorism plots. Also tonight... The Midlands heritage at risk. Find out why Beaudley Bridge could be in danger. An emotional return for Falkland veterans 35 years after HMS Coventry was sunk in the conflict. It's nice to see recognition from people who didn't make it back. That's what it come down for. How woolly octopuses are helping improve the health of tiny premature babies. And with all the cloud around today, it's felt like a return to autumn. It's getting cooler over the next few days as well. I'll have all the latest details in the forecast a little later. Good evening. Guilty, the wife who bought her husband a knife which he planned to use in a terror attack in Birmingham. 21-year-old Madiha Tahir told her husband, I want you to kill people for me, I have a list. Well, this was her mo the moment that her husband, Umar Mirza, was wrestled to the ground in a joint intelligence-led operation by MI5 and West Midlands Police in rush hour traffic in Alum Rock in March. It was only a week after the Westminster Bridge attack and Mirza wanted to bring terror to the streets of his home city. He was obsessed with knives and replica guns and wanted to fight in Syria. Tahir bought him this combat knife on her credit card and he trained on this martial arts dummy. His attack wasn't fully formed when he was arrested, but he admitted preparing an act of terrorism by researching targets, including a synagogue and Birmingham's RAF careers office. But the police say he couldn't have planned it without the help of his wife. They had researched, uh, practiced and prepared to carry out an attack. They had bought a knife to, uh, and modified it so it could be concealed to carry out an attack. So uh, in our view was they were all part of a plot. Uh, they may have played different roles within that plot, but this was a, a single plot by family members to carry out a, a murderous terrorist attack, probably on the streets of Birmingham. While well, his sister Zeynab also supported him and earlier pleaded guilty to five counts of disseminating terrorist publications which she had sent to him. Madiha Tahir had denied any involvement, but today a jury at Woolwich Crown Court concluded she was no naive young woman and was her husband's willing partner in crime. Well, to discuss this case further, I'm joined by Zubeda Lambada, who is from Connect Futures, and they specialise in uh, training and research in the prevention of extremism. Good to have you with us. Thanks very much Thank for you. being here. Clearly, Tahir's role in this plot went way beyond simply buying a knife, didn't it? That's right. She was a willing accomplice um, as part of a plan where they wanted to attack. She purchased a knife, she paid for that knife, um, and over a period of time, uh, she was also involved both in terms of um, over a period of five years. So she, this wasn't happening in isolation. Mm. She was there egging her husband on um, and part and parcel of that picture of attacking in Birmingham. Is the role of women in terror plots changing? I mean, it doesn't seem as though this is a, a one-off. It's shifting possibly, but again, you can't generalise. Uh, in the same way that you can't have a single profile of a terrorist, mm -hmm. when it comes to this particular case, I think the gender aspect is quite interesting in the sense of we tend to view women as uh, second class almost in the sense of being victims where they're being manipulated. But in this particular case, I would argue that she was um, an equal partner um, that was, again, egging her husband on and, and less a victim in this. You've done a lot of work in trying to prevent radicalisation, but do you think enough is being done to try and prevent the radicalisation of women, young women in particular? It's very important to have context. I think the work around the prevent st strategy has been happening since 2007. It's important that we don't just target a particular segment and we don't actually then start dividing that according to women, according to young people. 
we all want to feel safe. We all want to be part of that solution. So for example, today there was a conviction against far-right um, extremists. So it's important that we have young and old, different, um, different backgrounds, different age groups, and also the practical bits. How do we stop radicalization? How do we understand social media? So in this particular case, social media played quite an active part. So it's important we don't forget the distinctions, but it has to happen in the preventative space. And that's one of the messages that we want to get across in our training as well. Okay, very interesting. So Thank you very much for joining us. Thank, Thank you. you. Hereford is to become a university city with the government pledging £15 million to fund a new engineering institution. It will specialise in manufacturing and technology and is being set up in conjunction with several major businesses. The campus will be located in existing buildings in the centre of Hereford and will take its first group of students next year. Here's our business correspondent, Peter Plisner.